<laughs> Welcome to the family with Alex Brampernard Rasmussen. Andy Brampernard. Co host Catherine Brandt. Why are you rocking out, Alex? This music She's marching to her own. It's just so. I'm feeling the music today. Rocking out, man. I am having one of those try to get off a subscription plan mm -hmm. on the internet. Oh, those are fun. Why? Do they make I thought I did it and now all of a sudden I got an email. Your product will be sent to you shortly. It's like, oh, no. God. No, no, no. And now it doesn't recognize the password that was saved on the computer. There you go. So now I'm trying to, I have to redo my password. Why is it so hard? And I always say I'm never signing up for a prescription again. And then I do it. Can't do it. <clears throat> no, no it's, it's this laundry detergent stuff that doesn't have um, plastic bottles. I'm trying to save oh, the yeah. world here, but I don't like the product. What uh, is it? Can I say that? Yeah, yeah you can say you don't like true, true earth true earth oh is that the sheets thing it's the sheets and the dishwasher tabs it doesn't wash the dishes at all oh, it's okay oh, for like it's okay for like towels and the uh, yeah i don't like so they have a bunch of different products i haven't yeah. even tried the household cleaner i don't the dishwasher tabs are in my opinion useless and i don't know if it's because of the water down here Oh, yeah, the water, um, the water is super really hard. Weird. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it is really be, hard down here. It'd be so worth I think taking it, what you have and bringing it home and trying yeah. it, home, you know. Yeah, well, I don't like it down here. So I yeah. don't want it to be shipped down here. Yeah. And I can't get off of it, man. Just email them. I, anytime it's like, this is confusing. I can't do it. The, the, <laughs> email them. Like I, right now, I we have to, too. we... Every once in a while, I do a meal planning kit thing if I just am like I'm worn out on planning yes. meals or we have a week that I just am like if we're too busy. I can't go to the grocery store or whatever. Or if we're coming back from vacation, sometimes I do it, um, but I don't do it all the time. Okay. And when we were in Disney, I got charged for uh -oh. a meal kit that was chicken, one of the dishes, and the other was stuffed bell peppers. And I was oh. like, oh, God. hey, can't uh, I can't eat either of these. So if you send them to me, I will just not be able to use them. And they just refunded me and stopped oh, it. That's good. So that's good. Oh. But if you want a detergent and washing, dishwashing soap situation, that doesn't have plastic look up drops d-r-o-p-p-s d-r-o-p-p-s I've, yeah, I've been using it for probably four or five years since i've been using it since sage was out of diapers so yeah four years and i really like it i've had melissa, really good melissa and andy you sent you had some leftover stuff from when you were down here I think, yep. yeah, and it, it, I really like that. That worked beautifully in the dishwasher, whatever that was. See? Uh, I will have to text you the name because I don't remember it. Yeah, Is it a that subscription was. that you like get mailed to you? I don't think so. Buy it. Oh, because these drops, oh. it comes in a, um, it comes to, it's a subscription and it comes to you in a, just a cardboard box and then you open up the box and they're all just in there and I keep them in a little bin in our laundry room and they work great and then i use the dishwasher detergent pods too and i've i've loved all of it and they also have um like oxy clean type pods oh, yeah, as well nice. for whitening which is i've used those they have specific right. um athletic clothing oh, detergent nice. which we use yeah so we use a lot Super of their stinky stuff. stuff yeah we use a lot of their stuff and i've i've had really good Okay. Luck with it. I like it. I a lot. use Tide. That's what I use. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't. No, I don't. That's a lie. Every time somebody uses Tide, I can like smell it on really? them. Really? It is. Yeah. Tide is a very, very strong yeah. smell. There's and a new breast, too. There's a, there's a new ad on television for um some super smelly gain. Gain yep. laundry detergent. Ugh. It's like yep, Febreze and this and that, and it's gonna smell. Oh, really no, why would you want that? Andy, you used to use those. Popples or whatever, yeah. the like Pop you bubbles. sprinkle it into your what? Yeah, you used to use those like you sprinkle the smell. Oh, the unstoppables. Uns or Uns we haven't used those in Wait. a long time. Yeah, but you used to. Yeah. Uns those and why smelly. did you use them? Because Melissa bought them. But to, just for the smell. I think so. Yeah. Okay. Just See, like... I am like I don't want my laundry smelling like anything. 
Yeah. Ooh, that's We're at that point now. I want my laundry to be smellless. Like, I think I buy the the dish detergent. You either have to choose, like, lemon verbena or, you know, whatever. And so you have to choose a smell. But the detergent, you can choose. There's lavender something. There's fresh rain or something. And then there's unscented. And I'm like, See, I, I just the want the towels it. and the sheets to smell nice. Yeah. I don't mind that. But I don't want my clothes to smell like that. Yeah. 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 I don't know why. I don't know why. Like, I don't know why people need to smell so much. Like, I have one friend. Anytime she stays with me. So that she she stays with us and she stays in the basement because she lives out of town. And she stays in the basement. And every single morning she comes up and opens the door. And it's just like this waft of mm-hmm. smell. Some people just love it. Of like yes. all the perfumes and soaps. And it's just like, oh, yep. Oh. Cause I, I think it's not because, well, we also, I think, have that, I, I don't know, I am very, I, we have good sniffers. Yeah. Everything sure smells do. very strong to, yeah. to us. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and Tom, you use cologne and stuff, but you don't douse yourself no, in like I a don't. maniac. Yeah. 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 Well, and when you're not used to, like, mom, you didn't use, like, tons of scented stuff no, I our whole really. lives and like dan he grew up in a house where it was like they used tide and you know dawn and all of the typical yep. things yeah. that had all the perfumes in it and since living with me he's like anytime now that i am around somebody that uses really strong shampoo or he's like if we're staying at a hotel that has really strongly scented shampoo he's like it makes me feel like almost sick He's like, this is really? something that I never noticed before. And now it's like he just notices smells. Yeah. It, I don't go crazy. Like my, my dearly departed sister. Oh, she yeah. would lose she, her like, mind if somebody had perfume or cologne on. I just can't stand it. I just can't stand it. I just can't stand it. Can you stand it? Lose it. Can you stand it? And I also read a lot of um, reviews on like skincare products or sunscreen or whatever mm-hmm. before I buy anything. Usually now I don't know why, but I do. And um, the people that go nuts about the smell. I mean, most skincare products or shampoos, even if it does smell, it doesn't smell forever. Well, yeah, it smells for a very it, short period yeah, of time until it's has. exposed to the air, and then it's yeah. going to go away. People lose their minds over scented things. They either no, love I, them to be super strong or they can't stand anything at all. I know I recommended a deodorant to a friend once and it has like a very mild mint smell to it, mm-hmm. which I didn't choose it for the smell. I chose it for other reasons. And I was like, and she bought it and she's like, I can't handle it. The mint is just so overwhelming. And I was like, <laughs> I didn't even really notice the mint. Like, mm. it, I don't know. She just was like, I, I used it for like two days and I was like, I just can't, I can't stand it. I was like, okay. Yeah. You're some one people of those. people are like that. <laughs> Dial it back. Dial it back. Yeah. People go nuts or yeah. smelly things. They do. I got to mention. Do. I got to mention something from, I forgot about this 100%. I don't know why. But, you know, you move on to other things and they're, whatever happens. Mom and I started watching the special edition long versions of The Office. They have 37, 38 minute versions mm-hmm. instead of 25 minute versions. And they didn't edit anything out of it. I completely forgot about this over the years. <laughs> Michael Scott goes, I'd like to introduce you to our newest uh, cast member here in The Office. Cast Meet Andy Bernard. I'm like, yep. what? Yeah, Andy heard <laughs> all about Nova. that in high school, didn't you? <laughs> What did you say, Alex? B.J. Novak is not his real name. No, yeah. B.J. Novak is Ryan. Oh, oh he's oh, yeah, Ryan. That's, yeah. Ryan. that's uh, Ed Helms. Ed Helms. Helms. He's really good, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. But yes. honestly, got to meet Andy Bernard. I'm like, what? Didn't yeah, that know? came out when I was like uh, probably twenty ish. Oh, I 19. thought you were younger. No, it was like I was nineteen, twenty. So yeah. whenever you introduced yourself, did you get a? <laughs> For a long time, yeah. <laughs> I, been, I never made that i didn't really watch the office no, when it came Great out show. and like i it's never so even realized that that was a thing until like maybe 10 years ago i was like oh he's got andy's name it's like i just if you've ever worked in an office it is so funny because it's mm-hmm. it parallels 
a lot of the personalities oh, in it an does. office. It's no like Abbott Elementary it. and working in a school. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like, this exactly. is how it is. Pretty much. True, I mean, but... Michael Scott, the stuff he says, it's just oh, like God. you're the biggest dolt that ever walked. We were talking about that this morning, Mom and I were, and it's one of Brittany's favorites. When Michael Scott said, well, I'm not superstitious, but I'm kind of stitious. I'm a little stitious. I'm, I'm a little stitious. I'm a little stitious. I'm a little, I'm a little stitious. <laughs> Now, that's a great line. It is a great line. You know, like that and Parks and Rec. <laughs> Parks and Rec's a good show, too. Yeah. It's a similar situation where it's just like, all these people are just such dopes. Mm -hmm. and that's it's a like great show, though. People. It is. It's very funny. You know? And um, Rain Wilson in it is just, oh, he's just. God. What did he say? He circumcised himself when he was five? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, how did the writers even come up with this stuff? I performed my own circumcision when I was five. He's a that great guy, too, by the a way. Shrewds are a sturdy stock. But you're not going to come up with a better line, but I'm kind of stitious. I'm, I'm a little stitious. stitious. I'm a little stitious. And Stanley, what he has to put up with. Oh, my mm -hmm. God. Oh, God. You can just feel it. his pain. Yes, that's true. It's always like... <laughs> that is very, very true. Yes. So what else is happening in the world? Everything I, I, I was told uh, by Kristen Burt just about half an hour ago that they're trying to get the old Yellowstone crew back together to finish that off. I thought and they had one more season. I think they, they do have one more season, but I guess he those two don't get along. Ugh, Who's I those two? Just pretend to get along. So Why is it on every two? show now are you yelling? Uh, Kevin Costner and. Kevin Costner and the Taylor, Taylor Sheridan, Sheridan yeah. the writer. Oh, of the books. I mean, guys, oh. a brilliant writer and the TV shows. He's yeah, I think he. TV yeah, I think too. he does the scripts too. Um, I went to the Timberwolves game last night, and and I met and uh, I met Dan's boss and one of his coworkers. Um, the so does anybody here? No, you don't. Dad might know like the fact that the Timberwolves are amazing this year. No, and we have like yeah, we're an incredible basketball team. Oh. Um, and we have shocking. The, some we have some of the best players in the NBA and How did like that happen? everybody says the next Michael Jordan. Dad, do you know who I'm talking about? No, because no. Timberwolves are not that good a team. They're good, but they're not good. They're extremely good this year, actually. No, they're they're the best in our conference and we're hmm. in, an incredible basketball team, actually. Yeah, you look at the standings. Right. We're Okay. We're a very good basketball team. Yeah, 51 points even... last night, right? Uh, Anthony Edwards, yep. which is like everybody's like, he's the next Michael Jordan. Like, he's such a good basketball player. Is he um, a baby? Is he right out of college or high school? No, this is his third year, I want to say. Oh, okay. We are tied with the Nuggets at yeah. the top of our conference. Yeah. The Nuggets? Yeah, so not even winning a conference. So that's Nevada? We're tied at the we're top. We're tied at the top, yeah. If, and then if, we, if you're and tied, then, you're not winning. And then next week, we could be winning. <laughs> So because it's based on like... wins or percent? It's based on percent, it looks like. I don't know. Yeah, but so any... our percent is 0. 0.696, which puts us at the second in both conferences. The Celtics or Celtics or however the hell, hell you pronounce Celtics. it, they're it's at 0. Celtics, 0. 0.785, have... so that's yeah. pretty high. Yeah, yeah. we're a very good basketball team this Look year. Look at that. Very yeah. good. We're um, of the Celtics. The Celtics are, yeah, we're killing it this year. Yeah, so but we're in your pipe and like, smoke it. Get dad, ha ha. Um, I like the Celtics. What are you talking about, ha ha? What team no, is I LeBron mean, James on? I that's the one I hate. You hate Lakers. LeBron James? He's the Lakers. Okay, good. I hate them. Um, <laughs> he's an awful person. I hate him. Yeah, um, okay. Anyway, I mean, Anthony Edwards, who everybody's like, he's the next Michael Jordan. Like he, there, everybody's just flipping out about Anthony Edwards, which okay. is on the Timberwolves, and he scored fifty-one points last night by himself. Is, yes, yeah. he did. Holy yep. moly, that is. So we were there for that, and it was really weird because the rapper Fifty Cent was at the game, and he like during the game, he, I guess he's a big Timberwolves fan, and huh. he's friends with Alexander is he Rodriguez. No. He's friends with Alexander mm. Rodriguez, who is a part owner of the Timberwolves now. Okay. No, um, oh, a part owner. Yes, you're right. Yeah. He does not own the team. Do you have to disagree with everything <laughs> I say this morning? I'm just saying no, he wanted to own the whole right. team and he missed the cut. I, you do know I that, I said right? part owner. And I know, you said, but I'm just saying he, he's not going to be the owner of the team. He's going to be a part owner. I never said he was going to be the owner. Uh, um, anyway, and so he was watching the game and then he walked out with like a little crew during the second quarter he just like, 
yeah, bodyguards and people. And Dan was like, that's 50 Cent. And he was like, he's been at one other game that I've been at this year. And he walked out and then was gone for a long time. And then all of a sudden, he walks back, like, the minute before Anthony Edwards scores his, because his career record before that was 49. And so he broke his career record last night and he scored 51. And, like, the minute that 50 Cent walked back in, back in Anthony Edwards scored a two pointer and right. then broke his record. And I was like, they must have been like, hey, 50 Cent, you got to get back out there because Anthony Edwards is about to score right. 50 yeah. points. So that'd be great if you were there for that. We'd love that for our publicity. And it was really funny. But yeah, it was a really cool moment. And I yeah. guess Anthony Edwards is a really good guy. And we have really a bunch of really good guys on our team. Like How just um uh Anthony Edwards, I think is twenty four. So he's if he's young, yeah. Anthony Edwards is sixty three. Where did he come from? How tall is he? He's twenty two. He's twenty two. Oh, he is. Oh, he is. oh so this young is only his second. Very young. Yeah, he's really he did it's hard to tell. And he's not that tall. He's six what? four. Yeah, he's six four. Oh. Michael Jordan wasn't that tall. No, nope. wasn't he? I think Michael no, Jordan's no. six four, six six maybe. Michael six, Jordan four is still pretty tall, six, but six. not, in not for a basketball player. No. Six, six, Rudy Gobert is like seven four, seven three. Average eight. NBA height yeah. is six six. So yeah. Michael Jordan was average for an yeah, NBA average, player, and yeah. Anthony Edwards is short for yeah. an NBA right. player. Yeah, but he's still like he, he can jump. He's hit his head on the. Nope hoop a few times because he jumps so high wow yeah and he just like he's i don't know vertical. yeah he's got a lot of vertical and we just we have a lot of really good players like rudy gobert carl anthony towns is really amazing he's been he like tore his look at alex dan girling on the timberwolves well, because dan dan and i went to a timberwolves game when we first started dating that's when i met some of his closest friends he was like we're gonna go to a timberwolves game and you can meet my friends and i was like sounds good and i have never really cared about the timberwolves because they've never been good right so i've just like never really cared mm -hmm. and um then dan this last last year he started going to some games because he has a friend that has a partial season pass or not season pass tickets. season tickets and um so we started going to some <laughs> games and then he was like they're getting really good like it's actually pretty impressive what they're doing with the franchise and how quickly they have like been able to get good players and turn it around and ownership and all this stuff. And um, so then this year he was like, do you want to come to a game with me at some point? And I was like, sure, you seem to really enjoy it. And so they I'll... do put on a good show. They've always they put, put on, on a, good a show. great show. And it's so nice. Cause it's the target center is easy to get into and out of. You're not waiting in line shoved together with a thousand people the whole time it's not extremely loud like vikings games are so loud the entire right. time everyone's screaming and swearing and freaking out and then i mean for the three hours that you're at a vikings game they're playing for maybe an hour yeah because there's so much waiting around and minutes, yep. blah 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 mm -hmm. so it's like but the timberwolves it's like they're always playing and when they're not yeah. playing they have something going on in the court like they are crunch is out there doing like shooting baskets from roller skates off of a ramp like it's oh. they've so many things going on all of the time and it's like there's always something to watch but then you don't also feel like you are going to miss something if you go and get some food or you know mm -hmm. i don't know i'm like i really like this this is fun yeah they are fun they're fun games super fun and it's just and it's fun to you know having been a vikings fan most of my life it's really fun to support a team that actually does well <laughs> and watching them like last night this is my fourth game that i've been to this year last night they were at the beginning of the game kind of was like a slow start but they were like we know that we can easily win against this team they played the washington wizards last night and um we they were like it was kind of a slow start and people that had never been to a timberwolves game because we were with Dan's new co-workers and they were like I don't know it doesn't look very good and Dan's like they've got this don't worry about it and then in the third quarter they just it was like point after point after point after point after point after point it was like just really cool to see a game that is played well and how about those how about, sorry how about those twins Tom how are they doing yeah they're a barn burner the twins are horrendous oh 
Dan well, went to the game Monday. Is it. Yeah. Let's see. MLB standings. Let's check them out. I mean, it's early in the year. We are, yeah, second from the last for our league. Uh, tied three ways for the last, uh, second to last in the entire, We're uh, tied for last. whatever you call We're it. We're tied Ew. for last. On for um, <laughs> No, not last. Go. The White Sox are the last. Yeah, White Sox are horrendous. White Sox are 2-9 right now. They're uh, oh, God. not wow. coming back from this. Well, it is true that... Once a team like you hear about a team being good for so long, you know, like the Yankees and mm -hmm. like whatever, and you just think like that team's just good, but it's like, no, oh, well, the Yankees are at the top right now. Well, yeah, so. Yankees, yes, still are, yes, but like, I don't know, you can, you just think a team is good mm -hmm. because that's a good team, but like if right. ownership changes oh, or yeah. they lose a couple players or well, the players only... aren't getting along, like it. The Effects only basketball team I know is the 90s Chicago Bulls exactly. because, of course, they're not doing well right now and they haven't for quite a yeah, while. The Bulls I are not not very good. Like I know um, Dan went to the game when we played the Bulls and Sage was like, oh, I think the Bulls are going to win. Like the Bulls are such a good team. And Dan's like, you're thinking of the you're thinking mid 90s of 30 years Bulls. ago. Yeah. <laughs> like, and he's only that, five. So. That's <laughs> not how. Well, yeah. And he's like, you know, obsessed with Michael Jordan because mm -hmm, he's everywhere. Right. But yeah. Right. And, and Netflix right now is shooting a documentary on Anthony Edwards. Huh. They're doing, they're doing four. It's kind of like that quarterback show where they picked three or four quarterbacks oh, yeah. and like followed them around. They're doing that with basketball players. And Anthony Edwards is one of them, and everybody's like, once this documentary <laughs> shows up, it's he's just going to be mm. everywhere. The only Jersey well, numbers I can name: so we'll Michael Jordan and Mickey Mantle. The Timberwolves better be ready to pony up some cash to keep him. Oh, they will. What's and his they're contract? Making, Does mean, anybody know what his contract is? I don't know what his contract. How long do we have him? How long do Timberwolves contracts usually last? Uh, one year to, you know, I don't know. I have absolutely no idea. Some people only get one year. Are we talking about Anthony Edwards' contract? Yeah. yeah. Just wondering how long. Because we have, have him. everybody that we have. Five-year extension. Oh. Everybody that we have right now is quite young, except for Mike Conley. He's a little bit older, and he's apparently the nicest man in the NBA. That's good. Right. He's one of our that. starters. He's the wise old man. And there's a, there's a couple guys that I'm like. You have three brain cells. Yeah. <laughs> because they're, you know, because they like during breaks, they have like videos of the team pop up and the team will be talking or whatever. And like there are a couple right. of them that I'm like, you, you okay? Uh, Is it hard yeah. to read for you? <laughs> that you card? It's a little uh -huh. hard. Oh, Nas Reed. He's a really good player. He's been playing. He's not usually one of our starters, but um, since Carl Anthony Towns is out, Nas Reed has been playing as a starter. And he got kicked out of the game for elbowing somebody yesterday. Ooh. Got ejected. I was. So we were how, all like, how do you watch a Timberwolves game? On the television. What do you mean? I mean, do you have to have an NBA app? Do you have to like subscribe? No, on TV. Direct like TV. I mean, I is it no easy to watch them, or do they make know. it as hard to watch that as they do the Twins games? No, Probably. Twins. Dan watches them on his phone, but I don't know if he paid for like. A certain oh, thing, might, or I don't know. Might be fun to watch this kid play. Is all it's, I'm saying. So, ev the whole team is really fun to watch play. Like we, it, it's just I don't know. They're a good team. The only we only have one kind of weak link, which is Rudy Gobert. He's a very good player, and he's extremely tall, and but he's really bad at the three pointers. Mm. He makes like half of them. Oh, and so great. people foul him all the time because oh. they're like, he's only going to get one of them. It <laughs> makes me. For some okay, reason, I, got, really I got a question for you. Yes. This, is, this was part. I was a Celtics fan for a long time because, you know, Larry Bird and McHale and all that stuff. And then I met McHale and I haven't been a fan since. But in any case, <clears> um, I got to be honest with you. And I know this is a different. I was a huge Celtics fan. I used to watch them all the time. Like kind of like where you're watching the Timberwolves now. But then that era came to an end. But I probably won't go back and watch the NBA until they raise the basket a couple of feet. It's just too feet. easy for these guys. A couple of feet? These guys can yeah. get their waist up at the rim. It's like, Jesus. They need How high is an NBA hoop? Ten. Ten feet. Ten? Okay. 
And it needs to be about well, 12, yeah, if you're maybe seven 13. feet tall. Yeah. yeah, that doesn't, I mean, like. But not a lot of them are. I mean. Well, a six foot six each... person could probably touch an eight foot ceiling. Well, you're raising oh. your hand. It's like you barely long. even have to jump to get the ball into the yeah. net. So, yeah, I, there's a. Well, I'm, I'm sure also, how long has it been at 10 feet? I'm guessing a Forever. long time. Forever, yeah. And oh, I'm guessing right. the average height of an NBA player oh, has increased over the years. Huge. I don't know, because, like, my – the teacher that I work with, her father-in-law was a Timberwolves player, and he's 7'3". Actually, yeah, no, it really – in the, the your age, Dad. In the 1951 season, the average height was 6'4", so yeah. actually, no, it really it has really not has gone it, up. Yeah. I mean, every once in a while you hear, like, that Victor Webanyama guy, he's – I don't even know, 8 foot 12. <laughs> Just so freaking tall. Victor, what? Webman, oh, yeah, nine feet. If you just type in, <laughs> yeah, I'm just... yeah, if you just type in something that sounds like that, he's a, he's 19, and I think he's, how tall is he? He is 7'4". He's 7'4", and he's 19 years old. Wow. Oh, he's 20 now. He just turned oh. 20 in January. But he's actually a really good player. The first Timberwolves game that I went to this year, he, we were playing against his team, and everybody's like he's amazingly agile for somebody so tall well, and he's, he's extremely so, thin he he's only, extremely he weighs 209 thin. pounds which is a lot of pounds God. but but he's at his height four. he is borderline underweight yeah he's, he's so oh. skinny. his bmi is 19 underweight is 18.5 his legs so. out of the basketball shorts i was like <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, he's, like, so, he's an ostrich basically. so he has to like once he fills out though yeah he's gonna be oh, yeah there's pictures of him he amazing. looks like slender man yeah, he's so skinny. You guys so, remember so Manute, Manute Bull? Do you remember him? No. Manute Bull was a seven foot seven NBA player. I know the there name. Are, there are pictures of him standing flat footed, grabbing the rim. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, but that's not now, normal. That's a guy who looks like Slender yeah, Man. Look at pictures normal. of him. But that's not normal. You know, normal. His you know arms like most... are like three feet long. Because like Rudy Gobert's seven two, seven three, or something like that, and right. he is like for sure much taller than most people on the court. Oh yeah, I understand. A lot of the time, my yeah, new if you could just bowl? stand there by the basket with your hands outstretched, and Not they just minute, pass it to minute. you, and they just put it in. Put it in. My new ball has the kind longest wingspan in the NBA in the history of the NBA, eight foot six. <laughs> Holy yeah, he's just all arms. So each of his arms must have been have like three and a half feet. Yeah, eight foot six. Eight foot six. Oh his God. wingspan. His wingspan. Yeah. Look at how tall. Okay. I know. This does, picture <laughs> is hilarious. How do you there's get a in a car of, or anything? I, don't know I know. How do you live at that height? Just, there's have to crawl into everything. Yeah, I'm thinking. Wait, how tall was he? Seven, seven, seven. seven, seven. Yep. I mean, a comfort to height, height toilet is just nothing to these kids. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's no like, longer a comfort no. height. I mean, honest to God, how do you live? Uh, yeah, I don't know how you... Because, I mean, every once in a while, my the teacher that I work with, her father-in-law comes into the school, and he's 7'4", seven, 7'3", seven, or 7'4", and everybody is, like, yeah. shocked yeah. by his height. And I'm yeah. like, then even taller than that? I don't know. There's wow. a guy that lives in our building that's got to be seven, almost. Yeah, seven, two, something like God, that. He's tall. The Dan guy. has a lot of friends that are very tall, like six. And my friend Alex, he's like six something. He's like six, four, I think. He's really tall. Six, yeah, four. Yeah, Dan has a lot of friends that are like six, 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 eight. And I'm There's like, a lot of like teenage girls so in our town who are taller than me. There's just like tall people everywhere. I have a now. niece that is 16 years old and she's six foot four. Yeah, there's just like t people are just tall as all hell. All just didn't, yeah, I it's don't remember people. anybody in high school being um, one one girl was taller than me. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I was always I mean, the tall kid. Well, Fawn. Okay, so Fawn's obviously very not small. the tall kid. Not the tall kid. Mm -hmm. She's the short kid. But I will say, I was talking to one of the. I was talking to the preschool teacher the other day and her daughter is also in Fawn's class and her daughter's name is Evelyn. And I was like, is Evelyn like average height? Cause I don't know what average for their ages actually like looking at all the kids, they're either extremely tall or extremely short. Like there are kids that are a head taller than Fawn yeah. mm -hmm. or more. And it seems like her class, the girls especially are all extreme, like 
either extremely tall or very short. I was like, what is an average seven? Well, now like we'll say eight. What is an average eight-year-old's height? Because I don't know. Because people don't seem to be average. Uh, let's see. So well, it's a said, long range. She said that because I was like, I feel like Evelyn is probably average. Well, and she was like, she's about to have her eight-year checkup, so I'll let you know. And she was the 61st percent. So I was like, okay, just a average. little taller than average. The 50 so would be right. like right at average. Yes, yeah. 50 inches. Yes. Okay. Oh, oh 50 inches would be 50 percent. Pretty much, yeah. Right. There you yeah. go. And Fawn's yeah. usually in like, you know, third. Yeah. So. Yeah. But then her two little friends that she has are two little blonde girls that are like, you know, right around her height. Just like inch or two taller. She's, like found she always... She's found a support group. Yep. She likes to find little blonde girls. Like you guys friend. better watch it with your kids because what? two parents just got uh, sentenced to jail because For their what? son murdered somebody. Yeah. Yeah. They got 15 okay, years why, of peace. Why should we watch it? <laughs> Because your kids are going to start killing. You better watch your kids. Kids start murdering people. We can't <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's my point. Right there. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I I mean, people have been talking about this for a long time. Like parents that don't pay attention to their kids oh, and they're God, out there doing mistake. all these crazy things yeah. that the parents should be somehow held accountable. And I and this actually happened. Yep. I, I yeah, was I really kind of shocked. How old it's, was this kid? He was like a teenager. Yeah. Like teens, I think. Maybe... Yeah, it, his his defense was my parents wouldn't get me mental health help. Right. And I kept on asking for mental health help, and they wouldn't. Well, so that's apparently he was like that's... posing with guns online, and they just ignored it well, and just, that sort of yeah. thing. You know, well, they... all of these people that are like mass murderer school. Yeah, shooters, that's they usually all because done that. They all have done it. Yeah. I know. Anytime Fawn is like mad at me because I won't let her run around to dance competition with. <laughs> her friends and no adult supervision and I'm a terrible mother and don't let her do anything mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. I'm like, listen, I, I actually care about your safety. Not that the parents that let their kids run around the dance competition don't, but I'm like, no, no, you will be watched by an mm -hmm. adult well, at all you times. You had overprotective parents. So maybe that's also, that. but also I'm yeah. like, there are hundreds of people here. Yeah. And there's no like security. Mm -hmm. There's no, I'm like, yeah. what? You think you're just going to, no, absolutely not. There's no chance that you're just going to, no. no. Uh -huh. And she'll be like, I want to, like, can you, you just leave me smart. home and all whatever? And I'm like, that's called child negligence. Mm -hmm. And no. Maybe in like six years. Child neglect. But not I can actually, in the state of Minnesota, I could leave her home alone now. At eight? And there's no, yeah, what? I could leave her huh. home at, I could have left her home. I think it, I don't think that there's an age. I think like I remember legally. being home alone at eight, I think. Yeah. I don't no. think there's legally no. an age in minutes. I know there's legal, there's in certain states, there are times like a nine-year-old can be left home for three hours. Mm. Uh, I might have left you in the house when I was down at the barn. But I never no, I remember, left. I remember yeah. like being put to bed and then the babysitter would leave. And then no. you guys came home like later. No, 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 no. never. I never think so. Well, if they left, they weren't supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go. And somebody <laughs> should have narked on that babysitter Sorry. because that was not the contract that I, I ever remember. said. I don't remember any of that. But Maybe you just didn't know they were there because you fell asleep. Because you were sleeping. That could but be. No, we How never, would know never would have allowed that to happen. No, no. Yeah. I don't think. I think I probably left you guys home when you were like twelve and ten. If I was like going to the grocery store or mm. something, but not for a whole day, not for a whole well, night. Not for a whole day. You guys had babysitters till you were almost fourteen. Yeah. No. Yeah. Fourteen. Yeah. Well, when you were fourteen, and well, Alex was twelve. Yes. You well, because that and that was more like to keep us amused, not like you'll die if you were left alone. Like well, it's just, just nice to have somebody around to like make sure you're well, yeah, 14. What was I going to do? I was going to go play PlayStation two. I, and I needed somebody to keep me amused at all hours. Yeah, of the exactly. I'm, just, I'm just saying I would never would. Yeah. You know, I just don't think leaving kids home alone. There's any, any upside in that when they're younger than 14. Dave says well, legally it depends on the maturity of the child. Yeah. So that's, yeah, there's not like an subjective. Age. Yeah. That's interesting. Like Fawn, I probably could leave home alone for two hours and she would just like yeah, make herself a sandwich. No, and, no, Sage, I can't trust no. with an umbrella. No, like, Sage I, is a feral cat. <laughs> there's no way. No. Absolute no. maniac. Yeah, he would do. It's not like he would try to do anything bad. 
Like, he's not the type of kid that would be like, oh, I'm going to turn on the oven and, like, put wood in it or anything like that. Just to, like, <laughs> no, I, don't do I think he would <laughs> accidentally be like, oh, uh, I tried to pour myself some oat milk and it was all over the place and then i used all of the clean clothes in this hamper to mop it up and that like it just yeah it, would, it, would, it wouldn't be intentional if something were to happen yeah i mean yeah. When I, I remember when um one time when no name sandy again uh you had a friend who all of a sudden was can so-and-so spend mm -hmm. the night like sure and then a day or two later he had spent the night a couple of times and I was like, what's going on? And you said that his mother went to Mexico and he was staying with us. And I said, well, I never heard from his mother. So how is this? I said, obviously I'm going to keep him here. Right. Right. If she's really in Mexico, I'm not going to like start a thing. Yeah. And it's not odd like that she wouldn't have called me and said, is it okay if my son stays with you for a week while I go to Mexico? Mm -hmm. Then his uncle, who lived in our neighborhood, calls and says, is he over at your house? I said, yeah, he's been here for three days. Yep. That it's little never... blah, blah, blah. He was supposed to be staying with his uncle, but didn't want to. Oh, God. And nobody knew for three days where he was? Nobody knew where he was for three days. Okay. Did you not have the mom's <laughs> contact information? She was in Mexico. This was before. Oh, yeah, this, this was in the 90s. And, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm listening to this kid and feeling terrible for him because he doesn't know where his mom's staying. He knows she's in Mexico. That's all he knew. So, yeah, there was yeah, oh, different parenting styles for sure. There sure are. Like I would be They're... delivering my child to my brother. Yes. Handing him to my brother. Yeah, it's like here we are and confirming with yeah. he'll be there at this time. Yeah. I know. I feel like if Fawn, like if Fawn were sick and now Dan has to be working at an office. So if Fawn were sick and like I had to bring Sage to school, which is less than a mile away from our house, I would be like, yes, Fawn, you can stay home while I bring Sage to school. Yeah. Yeah. And then I'll five come. minutes away. Yeah. Because it's five because yeah, I would be gone for a total of yeah, five minutes. Yeah. Or if she were sick and I were taking care of her and like I'm trying to think of if the, if she were home for like thirty minutes or less. It, it because it was some sort of like very specific situation that I could, literally couldn't find anybody to like whatever. I feel like fun. I would be able to leave fun home. In contrast to your family, who is like you know the party house and drinking beers at fourteen because nobody was nobody about. was around. There was yeah. never 13, anybody around. 12, 13, 12, well, and then there's also the families that they're like, let's drink with the kids. Like if they're yeah. drinking, we should that. we should be with them. Technically, it is legal, I think, after a certain age. Yeah, sixteen probably. I think in Ireland it's six. Yeah, well, not okay. not anymore. I That's think. not it. Yeah, the, the uh, villages. The law is against buying alcohol from minors who are not your children. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but technically, I believe, and Dave, correct me if I'm wrong, I believe your kids can drink alcohol at home to a certain degree. Oh. Can't so, get drunk, I would imagine. Well. I don't know, actually. I don't even, I don't know if there's actually a rule that says you can't give them more than so much. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, technically, yeah. it's like, you know, as long as you're not abusing or harming them, then... Considering the judge, uh, arguably, our alcohol is harming them, so it's like it's kind say, of a gray area. It's not like alcohol is great for. Yeah, them. I'm not going to be giving my kid alcohol, but no. no, I guess you can if you so choose. Oh. Well, we worked the deal out when I was 11 years old, and a couple of my friends were 13, and my voice had changed at 11 years old, so I would get on the phone yeah. and ordered beer brought to the house. 11 at 11. At 11 years old, because my voice sounded like this when I was 11. And then Tommy O'Brien, who was much smaller than the rest of us and had a very high voice, he would go answer the door and he'd go, Dad, the liquor store is here. Oh, uh, just uh, the money's on the television, son. <laughs> it worked every Ran a time. Scam. Ran, Ran a scam. that scam. Okay. Ran a scam. Where did you get beer money? Yeah. What? Where did you get beer money? I had a 11? job when I was 11. I was a janitor. And you spent it on beer? Yeah. Whenever I could. <laughs> Absolutely. Whenever I got a chance, I would. But We have a phone call. 
Uh-oh. Is it Officer Dave? It certainly is. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly is. What the heck? Am I that predictable? Well, no, because we were talking about if it's legal too, and Andy said Officer Dave, and so it just yeah. it, it, it just legal. fit. Yeah. It just fit. Yep. What else am I going to do? I'm semi-retired, right? There you go. Semi. I remember. Yep. I remember, well, Andy. You had friends in high school whose parents were buying beer for parties for all the kids yeah that's just it was absolutely just oh, fine no. with them and yeah. i was like i just don't think this oh is they grew up problem. drinking at that age the kids they don't see anything wrong with it yeah. well technically it is legal for you to let your children drink in your house there you go it what is age it is at any age really any age yep you can you right now if alex if she was that type of mom that sat down with a beer or gl- glass of wine every night, she could let Sage have all all that she wanted to let him have. <laughs> Get Sagey drunk. I'd love to see that <laughs> one. Wouldn't that be something? That's I mean, Sagey. Oh. That sounds like a bad idea. But uh, no, when when my kids, you know, when I grew up, my of course my dad delivered beer, so he had a right. whole right. all beers like that's the best thing in the world. Um but he was like, it was always, if you guys want to have a beer, say, I want to have a beer, go down and get one, but you are not leaving the house. Yeah, now. right, right. And when our kids came along, my wife and I talked about it, you know, and I'm like, it was never, ever, ever a taboo for us to have alcohol. Right. Of any kind. And it was, you know, so when our kids got old enough, we were... If you guys want to sit down, we're having a bonfire out back. You guys want to sit down and have a beer with us? That's fine. But what I age? Care. What age? Well, they were 12, 14. Okay. And it's like you guys, but you're not leaving. And then as they got into high school, it was, they never wanted to go out and party, go to the uh, house parties or kid parties because all of the yeah. taboo-ness or whatever was gone. It was like, yeah, yeah, I have no reason to do that because I can do it at home with all I want. So, yeah. Right. Well, stigmatizing something, uh, yeah, that makes it more attractive in, in a way, oh, too. Definitely. I don't know. It depends on the kid. Because, like, for me, it didn't. You guys said, you know, you can't touch alcohol until you're 21. And I was just like, okay. Well, no, because we let you have, like, wine at. You know, when, oh, we went, when, when we went to San Francisco, yeah, we didn't say time. you're never touching it. We just did not want you getting <laughs> hammered and driving. I mean, that's what we were yeah. trying right. to that's prevent. I a lot of driving anyway. No, but I mean, mm-hmm. most kids get hammered and drive, and, yeah, and they true. end up dead. So this mm-hmm. is not most kids end up dead, but I mean, a lot yeah, do. It, I'd be, it was, I'd be getting hammered and then playing Twisted Metal, and then I'd <laughs> yeah, play poorly. <laughs> I'd lose, and, and that would be that would be the danger. I'd be like, oh, I can't even get to Calypso. Okay. <laughs> it's all true. You know, one thing I got to point out here, talking about where did you get money to buy beer when you were 11? I did have a job, so that's where I got the money. But you have to remember, a six-pack of hams or grain belt was a dollar forty, and a case was five bucks. Mm-hmm. Five bucks was yep. big bucks back in mean, those was, days. That was a lot of money back then, but I'm sure. A six-pack is a buck forty? Well, let's see. Let's, let's do some inflation calculate. Well, what's a six-pack right now? I have no idea. I, don't I have, have no idea. clue. Not a clue. Pack. Every it once in a while, I buy a six bucks, pack of beer just true. to have it. Five in the bucks. House. Okay, so you you said you were eleven, so that would have been sixty-two. Sixty-two. Buck forty, you said. That's what I remember. Yes. Yeah. So Buck forty would be fifteen dollars today. <laughs> so <laughs> actually, <laughs> pretty expensive. That's a lot of money, man. Yeah, for real. Is that how much a six pack is? I don't. I mean, oh, no. I guess of what if it's a... for about seventeen bucks. Yeah, I'm not paying fifteen dollars for a six pack of anything. If it's a designer beer, probably even more. Well, yeah, craft beers and that sort of thing. And yeah. these, um, Holly like my Pop. thing is, uh, these like vodka sodas, like high noon, that sort of thing. Oh yeah, yeah. those are and they're popular. pretty those expensive. Those are pretty expensive. They're quite expensive, yeah. but they're also like, you don't like with a with beer, you could easily drink a six pack and barely feel it. But with these, right. you would never want to drink six of them back to back. No, God no. No, you'd be feeling not great after that. You guys just made me think of something. A buck forty back in my time is now. Would you say fifteen dollars? That's fourteen fifty. Yeah, fourteen fifty. So actually, inflation has just kept pace with everything else. Yep. 
It has Arizona. for the oh, most part. God. If you look at like has, yes. various things, like various goods, there are exceptions. Like housing is a major exception, of course, yes. and cars. Yes. But like when it comes to just goods that haven't changed, you know, beer has been beer for a hundred years. Yeah. Uh, it really, yeah, it's everything's kind of kept pace. Yeah, the reason I brought that up is that you look at it now and everybody goes, oh, my God, we're going to pay people 20 bucks an hour. How are we going to do that? Blah, blah, blah. Well, I was making a buck 50 an hour back when I was 11, 12 years old as a janitor. So it's pretty much, what now, 15 16 17 dollars an hour? I was making 20 bucks an hour in, high, yep. in uh, college. Yeah, there you go. So it's really kept pace. So basically the argument about inflation is all political. Is that correct? No, mm, no, because there, there has been is, hyperinflation in the last few everything years. Everything is crazy Definitely. expensive I mean, right when, now. I mean, yeah. when people can't, can't afford to buy groceries. Yeah, it's yeah. bad. Mm -hmm. Every but time it, I blink, it's like I just spent a hundred dollars. Yep. on nothing. It sure is. Yeah, no question about. It. Well, and my favorite is at Sheraton. I can't remember. It used to be on uh, Hennepin Avenue, right there between like, like Fifth and Sixth Street. Went to dinner with my buddy. He bought dinner. And when he went, got up and went to the bathroom, they brought the check. And I went, God, i got to see how much this is. Because there were drinks and, you know, wine and with it was uh, steak dinners and all the rest of it. With the liquor and the wine and the steak for two of us, the bill came to $40. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Wow. And you know what I said when I was 18 years old? God, I hope I make that much money someday. <laughs> it's true. I did. If I could yeah. ever afford a forty dollar dinner, <laughs> now it's yep. like twenty bucks for a Starbucks. It is, isn't it? It sure is. Well, mom and I a couple of times this year, and it wasn't that something we teed up or set up or whatever, but there were four four people there. A thousand dollars for dinner, a thousand bucks. It's insane. It's like what? It's insane. It is insane. I don't, I don't understand. Maybe I'll start no. drinking again. What do you think? Don't that do that. Very, very that's, bad idea. That's a great way to spend a lot of money. I was going to say that's going to cost you a lot more money than move, move out first. And yeah. Move out. And a lot of, whatever you want. A lot of calories as well. So um, yeah, yeah, I'm, calories. Not, I'm not following you around everywhere to bail your butt out of trouble. Thank you. All right. Thank you. I appreciate no, it. None of us are. A couple no. weeks ago, so I told you I've been drinking vodka sodas. Yeah. So yeah. I get this... Um, I get these canned white Russians because I've never had a white Russian before. I've never had. And I'm like, you know what? That sounds good. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna try one of these. And I open it up. I drink it. It's one of the best things I've ever tasted. Really? Nothing but sugar. And I'm like, wow, this is really good. Um, but weirdly enough, the nutrition facts aren't on the can, like most of these vodka sodas really? tell you. Nutrition? So I look it up. I'm like, <laughs> well, I mean, like it'll tell you the calories basically. Drink. Because, like, the most vodka sodas are 100 calories a can, you know, fairly reasonable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's water and vodka. Yeah, it's a vodka and basically. fruit juice, yeah, basically, and water. Um, So this white Russian, I look it up, I'm like, man, this is really good. But I cream I should, and sugar. I should probably find out how many calories are in these before I start drinking a bunch of them. 560 per 12 ounce can. I was gonna say, holy it's god, calories. it's like a if you crammed a <laughs> slice of cake into a can and drank it, <laughs> it's actually probably more than a slice of cake. Yeah, probably. Wow. 560. I drank two of those in one day, that's half my calories for one day. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so it's true. If you ever buy something like that, just uh, be very careful when it comes to the calorie count because I know people think, oh no, people see that when you drink. <laughs> It's like, it's liquid. There's no calories in this. No, vodka actually has a fair amount Alcohol of calories in, in it. Alcohol in general, like, I mean. Yep. That's because your body recognizes it as sugar. Yeah, you process it as oh, it yep. carbs and sugar. And, That's yeah. why people that do nothing but drink can stay heavy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. No, Andy, you mentioned white Russians. You ask your mom if she's ever had a black Russian. Yeah. Everybody's heard the story, yeah. Tom. Yeah. We all know what a lush I am. A Blash Ruskin. Okay. Blash Ruskin. Blash they Ruskin. are delicious. No, we have a question from the chat. Ooh. Okay. Jim wants to know, have we ever had a moment, a, like a dinner or an event or something like that, where we were all together and you went through the things that we thought we got away with, but we actually didn't. And I can tell Jim right now, no for me, because I didn't really do things. Yeah, me neither. 
So we didn't do anything. We were very boring children, except for we didn't do our homework, and mom will. But they knew take, about that, and yeah. mom will complain about that all day long. Mm -hmm. We did because not. of the lying, and we did, but we didn't do anything. Did you have homework? Do you have homework? No, no, no. Just well, didn't do it. Not. The lying was the problem. But I we don't literally... physically have it because I didn't bring it home. Yeah, but mm -hmm. we literally. Did. That's like the. That's the worst. That was thing. our like re a rebel moment. Was and it wasn't even a rebel moment. It was no. I just didn't want to. We're both neurodivergent, and we we're like that sounds terrible. Oh well, God! Some <laughs> I would literally like. I would just not remember it's there i would mm -hmm. leave school yeah. and it would be out of my brain it's not like i chose yeah. not to do it yeah i would go to sleep that night i'd be like you know it's 10 p.m i'm laying down in bed and i'm like oh shit. yeah i forgot to do this important project i mean there are kids at school at in my class that bring their homework home do it don't turn it in yeah, and I've, then done, we're I've like, done that yeah. and then we're like why are you and then we contact the parents they're missing three days of homework it's all just sitting in their folder. Yeah, I hundred percent did that. God. Yeah, all the time. Like, yep. and some kids finish all their homework, just leave it on their desk and go home. Like yep. you're supposed to. Everybody's supposed to tidy their desk and show us their folder at the end of every single day. Just uh, sitting on their desk, yeah. never turned it in. If I'm not looking at it, it's just I don't see it. Yeah, in or, my brain. At and all. a lot of times, people, kids turn in homework that's half finished, and I'm like, hey, I want to finish this. Yep, happens constantly. Yeah, I remember one time I had to. Oh, go ahead. Dave. So our middle one was our yeah. middle one was like that. Yeah. 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 For some kids, it's just, it's yeah, just, you don't, if you don't set reminders and timers and stuff, you will not well, remember I mean, it. Think about a kid. They're at school all day long, sitting there, having to listen to stuff that they don't really care about and learn True. things that they're not choosing to learn. It's just like you have to, because that's what I said. And you have to sit there and physically manage your physical energy. You have to pay attention to something that you don't care about. Yep. You have to deal with all the kids around you in your class doing whatever they're doing. You have to manage if you have pencils sharpened, if you have all the things in place, where they need to be, all your folders, you know where they are. And at the end of the day, it's like, oh, pack everything up that you didn't finish, which that's yeah. only up to you to manage because you're the only one that knows what you didn't finish. Bring it home, do it, bring it back, turn it in. That's a lot for a kid. Yeah. I mean, I was the kid who forgot his shoes all the time. Yeah. I would just leave yeah. the house without wearing shoes. Didn't even think about it. Yeah. Get yeah. to school, realize. Halfway to Valley Fair, no shoes. Yep. And I mean, like, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. And it's just. So it's like, it's not like I was rebelling going, oh, I'm not going to wear shoes today. It just. No, don't think you about it. Even, you couldn't shut a door. Mm -hmm. Andy, shut the door. Yeah, my attention span was like a quarter of a second long. Yeah, well, as here's long as the... a nose in your face. That's how long your attention span was. <laughs> <laughs> well, and here's the thing. It's like sometimes, and it's hard because I know for me, and I'm still like this to this day, some mornings, breakfast, you know, feeding the kids breakfast, it's like, oh, it's I'm just getting it all done and everything's being put back where it needs to be. The dishes are ending up in the dishwasher it's all good and then other days i go upstairs afterwards and i'm cr i like burst into tears because i'm like that was really overwhelming because there were seventeen thousand things to do and i don't know how to like this just i because each thing feels like its own event like take the jam out of the fridge open the jam get the mm -hmm. knife put the knife in the jam like that's how my brain is sometimes but not all the time see i gotta point something yeah. out if you're watching this from home, or if you guys in studio, um, Catherine, look straight ahead. What? It looks like your mother's wearing a nurse's hat. Because oh, the, of the lampshade. lampshade. A World War II <laughs> nurse's hat. Yeah. World War II nurse's Under hat. Under his eye, Mom. <laughs> it's like a handmaid's tale. <laughs> it's wonderful. Yeah, handmaid's tale. It looks like a handmaid's tale there nurse's hat. That's exactly yeah. right. So, Officer Dave, what else? We only got about five minutes left. What else has happened in Pally? Not much. Just did my qualification for the part-time gig and uh, just sitting in the driveway now waiting to go in and make myself some chow before I go teach. Hey, what about these parents that were sentenced to jail for oh, yeah. what their kids did? Did you pay any attention to this story? I, I have not paid attention to that story. Okay. Um, basically because I looked at the headline and I'm like, oh, for Christ's sake. <laughs> um, but yeah. Well, I don't. I don't know. I mean, 
maybe maybe if we start putting parents in jail, parents will start paying attention to their kids. I don't know. I don't know what the answer yeah. is. Yeah, I mean, honestly, are, it, it so many does, kids are completely out of control. It goes down to parenting a lot of the time. And I mean, like, if oh, yeah. the standard of you know you have to be obviously negligent is in place, but it could also they could just weaponize this and say you know like some people if their kids act out we're going to put you in prison, but the rest of them we're not because you know you'll vote for us. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a bad precedent unless the standards for convicting people of this are incredibly high or low, right. depending on how you look at it. Yeah. You know, I think I think what a lot of it is gonna come down to is what the kids have been medicated and all that other crap. We're so overly medicated right now. Oh no question. Agreed. It's just ridiculous and I don't know. It's just so many parents just don't even aren't even interested in what their kids yep. are doing. It's yeah. like with this deal, and it's like you know when when Alex said, "I'm not letting fun out of my sight." You're a good mom, Alex. Thank you. Hey. I try. She is. Yep, it's that's how it should be. But yeah, I'm I'm so disgusted with the American culture. It's like. Mm -hmm. ah. Oh, I remember I remember <laughs> elementary school teachers wanting Andy to be on medication. As a matter of fact, I think I was told once that he, if he didn't go on medication, that he was going to have to go to some like special school Remedial or something. Remedial classes. Yeah, or yeah I was just like, you're go. forcing me to put him on meds. He's a kid. Yeah. I just yep. don't let, understand this. Let kids, let kids be kids, but keep an eye on what they're doing. I mean, come on. Mm -hmm. Well, and it's just so unreasonable to have the same standard for every child. Yeah, yep. that's exactly. Yeah. Like in our exactly. classroom, I'm really lucky that the teacher I work with, it's like she just like he's incapable of organizing his stuff. He just doesn't have that ability. And she doesn't get they don't get mad at the kid that can't organize his stuff. And it's like, you know, mm -hmm. the standards are different for each kid based on what they're capable of. Oh, I remember a lot of begging, times, like begging the teachers to please communicate with me what Andy needed to get done and what he hadn't gotten done so I could monitor it because he wouldn't tell me or know yeah. or I didn't know what he was yeah. supposed to be doing. You know, it's like if you're yeah. going to send a, a permission slip home, could you please let me know because he's he, he might have lost it on the bus and mm -hmm. he's never going to remember yeah. ever. We sent we sent our kids to private school when they were young and we had a family messenger was they the school wanted a single family messenger. So anything that came from the school went through this one child. Hmm. Our, uh, did he just get eaten by a dinosaur? Yeah, it I sounded think like you were good. just eaten by a Tyrannosaurus Rex. <laughs> yeah, we can't hear you anymore after a very loud whooshing sound. So That was weird. Are you okay, Officer Dave? Officer Dave, are you going to make tsunami. it? It was a tsunami. You think that's oh, what it was? I heard a whisper from inside the oh. T-Rex's mouth. Oh, no. <laughs> you know, you're yeah. extremely He's to crawl quiet. crawl out of his stomach. I can't hear him at all. Yeah, so oh, I so can't weird. Hear him well, it's like, time to end the show anyway, I think. So. Oh, there. I just heard him. There Are you alive? There we go. There we go. Hello. I'm still, I'm still breathing, yeah. Uh, okay. okay. All right. All right. Bluetooth decided to crap out. Yeah, it does track. that. Uh, yes, yep. it does. So Where I'll let we? you guys go. I'll see you Friday. All right. Yeah. So looking forward to it. Thank you. You bet, guys. Love you all. Take care. Love you too, Bye. pal. Bye. Bye. There you go. There's a perfect example of a good guy. Is Love you all. I mean, what a nice thing to say. Very nice. Don't it's you think? He's a nice man. Yes. All right. Any closing words? Uh, hmm. Don't think so. Closing words. All right. That's yep, going to do it. We'll one. talk to you tomorrow. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Talking.